Welcome back to Doom 2. Um, yeah, it's been a little bit. It's been like a month, I think. I live in a new city now. You might hear street noise. That's just going to happen, <laughs> I think. Um, and yeah, today we're going to play um, Monster uh, Condo, a.k.a. Monster Gentrification. Um, it is a map... As soon as I'm done shooting that. It is a map by Sandy Peterson. Um, and I think really represents like his style very effectively. Um, it's, you know, a lot of inner, you know, sort of vaguely related to each other, dispersed rooms with lots of traps, etc. It's probably one of the better manifestations of that. If only because of this like spooky library setting is uh, just like a much more distinctive setting for a map, generally. I wouldn't say this is like his greatest map, but it's definitely like, um, it's up there. I don't know. With these like next two maps are going to be both by Sandy Peterson. Um, and they're much heavier on combat, obviously. And I think it's sort of doomed to, um, I don't know, becoming a little bit, <laughs> becoming a little bit more consistent, at least at the very end, like um, getting more into, you know, more intense uh, levels and atmospheres. Um, and the last two, the the last two penultimate maps, the one after this, and the Living End, really emphasize that. Um, but we'll get there when we get there. We're just gonna play. I'm just playing the first, you know, 27 and 28 today. Um, I'm just going to start with uh, what Linguisa says on the April Agitation thread. Map 27 is an oddball of a map, with all the wood paneling and bookshelves, and how the map seems totally empty at first. It almost feels like the player is invading some sort of abandoned retirement home. Um, but it must be the demon's home then? Which explains the map's name, I guess. Monster Condo functions as Sandy Peterson's send-off to the type of map he likes best. One that is sprawling, fairly non-linear, um, and has tons of traps and individually ca crafted encounters. There's monster closets and lifts all over the place, plenty of ammo and power-ups, and monsters galore, all adding to one good time at the Hell Retirement Castle. Uh, one part... I, I'm still reading from Linguisa here. One part I always had a soft spot for were the identical rooms with Mancubi and Revenant traps. Primarily, we'll get there in a sec, um, in a few minutes anyway. Primarily because I could never figure out the idea behind it. Were players supposed to think it was the same room? Which makes no sense, because the player would then notice all the corpses had suddenly vanished and been replaced with more monsters. Maybe the, monster, maybe the monsters designed it for some reason. But the monsters are quite dumb, which would make sense, I suppose. Yeah, there is kind of a, a confusing logic that you can't really piece your head around in some of these maps. It seems like an idea that was just kind of briefly thrown at the game and kind of worked, but didn't fully like coalesce into something coherent. I mean, I, th I feel like that's the way with a lot of Sandy Peterson's maps. I'm, like, honestly on the fence if I like this map or not. Um, because it is objectively... Um, it's objectively an interesting map. Um, the setting is more distinctive. The fact that you begin the map uh, with things more silent... Um, and monsters just sort of gradually pop out the more that m you go into places and then it's kind of dark. It feels like a more fully realized setting. But there's just something about the execution of this map. Maybe it just doesn't... There's nothing... It feels like a lot of closets and stuff. The The one area that feels distinctive is that area that uh, Linguisa mentioned. And maybe an area at the very end, which I do like. Um, I don't know. I never like revisit this map a lot. I think because... One, I think it's just dark, and it's like a slower-paced map. Um, also, these maps do rely on like large encounters that you just have to have. Um, they they give you plenty of like invulnerability. Like there's an invulnerability, there's a light amp, but I'm always like anxious that I'm not going to be using it for the right encounter in the right place because that is the way with like these Sandy Peterson maps is that it's really about going the right path. 
Like here I just realized that that was an entirely useless thing to do. I could have thought about that for two seconds and realized that, but that's just like what these maps present you with. You never know if you're using the item provided for like the right thing. Um, this has a weird progression in that in order to get the, to this other side of of this room, I don't know what you call it. It's not really a room. It's like semi-outdoor, indoor area. Um, it's definitely a memorable beginning to a map. Uh, but yeah, to, in order to get to that, you have to activate that. Um, and that's your one way towards doing that. And then I guess to get back, you just have to like climb back into the, the pit and hit the, the lift up. Um, weird progression, but but you can see that this is basically I think Monster Condo is an extremely appropriate name. Um, if only because this level is basically just like monster closets. The level, like, it's you step over something, a bunch of monsters come in. You get you go into another dark area, step over something, it unlocks another area, a bunch of monsters come in, etc., etc. And it's not like a bad implementation of that. Um, I know some people like this map quite a bit. But it's kind of like a, I don't know, it's a weird kind of dark horse level. I like how weirdly empty it is. Um, and especially when you don't have the light amp on and, you know, you can see the... Um, and some of these traps here are kind of neat, like where it puts you down into a pit. It's hard to like, yeah, it's hard for me to know what to think of this map generally. Um, and it's one that I, that I play very much less often than almost any of the other maps like more than blood falls i guess but um it's not a map that i like feel inclined to revisit a lot i do think that there is something interesting about like the emptiness of it and how that adds to like the overall atmosphere of suspense here's the weird room with the like repeat it like repeats i don't exactly know um why it was designed that way i think it's a good point like and it it actually confuses me it like it is kind of a mind fuck because when i left i'm like i'm like i'm going out of the same way that i came in like even though i teleported to a different room right like i thought that was true um but no that's not the case like it you actually exit a different you're just teleported to an entirely different place um, and I can pick up the computer map there, but there's like a clone. I don't pick those up here. And then there's like a clone in the other room of the computer map, but I've already picked it up. I think I die here though. Um, no, I don't die here. I die to the revenants. But yeah, the computer map, you see it, it's there again. It, it's kind of a weird mind fuck. Like did they, how does that work? Did, was it like put there and then, um, but you, like you can't, I, I don't understand it. It makes no sense to me. I'm assuming if I had gotten the Berserk and the Soul Sphere, um, then I would be able to like pick those up. Then I wouldn't be able to pick those up like I can't pick up the computer map, but I don't know if that's the case. This also has like shooting open doors, which I guess because these are later maps, um, you know, that's what you're supposed to do. But there's a really egregious example of that in the next map, to be honest. This is just a weird little uh, um, interlude, I don't know what to call it, that doesn't seem to like have anything to do with the rest of the map. N none of the rest of the map is in the green marble area. I mean, the green marble area definitely is always conveys hell, but I think that's what's weird about the game too. Um, is that like by the time you're in the final episodes, you really, I really expected hell to be, um, I did terribly here and I like swallowed all the ammo and, and, and I would actually die in the next session because you have to take a lot of damage to get, you have to take at least like 20, if not 40, damage to get through the lava which is ridiculous this is such a strange map um but i think some of the like episode three maps in doom um 
In Doom 1, you're more like wandering through these abstract spaces, kind of in and out, and um, there's more of a, I don't know, like casual approach? I don't know how to describe it exactly. Um, and um, here it's like much more traps oriented and like directed, although there is some open, like, it, it's very much, uh, you know, built around these encounters and these encounters being kind of some sort of set piece. Although I think this is more of a set piece than other parts where it's just like a slow trickle of monsters that keep, keep coming in. Um, I don't know, like, um, when I originally played this game, I think I was very disappointed by how it really just didn't feel like hell at all, like in the way that episode three of Doom one, which, you know, has its problems, um, like did feel like hell because it's sort of like this like swirling mass or whatever, like it's, you know, like the world is kind of weird and abstract. And um, I don't know, you move through the space, space is more open, like, and here it's just like all these kind of like disconnected little ideas that sometimes connect back to each other and sometimes don't. And it just weird little pieces. Like there's parts of this map that feel very like polished and like like he knew what was he was going for. And then there's parts that feel like really oddly incomplete. I think the spirit world's a little bit that way too. Um, but because this is uh, later in the set, like, or later in the uh, the game, like, it necessitates being a longer map, so, so it's like this hub, but it doesn't have the, like, conceit of being set in a city. I'm trying to, like, not talk too much when the plasma is shooting, because it's so fucking loud. Um... It doesn't have the conceit of being set in the city, really, um, like the the city maps did, where you know you can go from building to building, and that sort of makes sense, and you know you sort of expect that in some way. Um, here it's like hell, but you know it's kind of a weird hell that's like a library, I guess. I guess it's hell on Earth, but I thought that the last episode, like you go to, it's very unclear, like what exactly the setting is, why you're supposed to be where you are, if this is like human structures or whatever um, that have been corrupted by hell, or it's like it was built all by monsters, in which case, like, it's a, is, is it a library for monsters? Uh, that one room, I like this arrow, but I don't really understand it. It's just kind of one of those things that's there, and this room is very empty, but it works actually okay when it's dark. The, the shape of the rooms is kind of weird, too. There's a lot of stuff that is very unique in this map, but I don't really know. I don't... Re it doesn't feel, like, fully realized in a way, either. I missed some secrets, too. I Like I said, I don't know this map as well, and I've been trying in the last few not to look up secrets um, and just to see how many I can get on my own. Um... And I got 100% in the next map, but this one I I got I missed like at least a few. Um, I think I missed like three secrets. Yeah, I don't even really know what to say about a lot of these individual encounters. Like this is kind of a boring encounter. I mean, I like the um, the ceiling, like the the sort of tech theme, that like weird pipe texture. Um, a lot of the encounters are just like groups of one kind of monster, which makes sense like thematically because it's monster condo and I'd imagine they'd be living together. But th then I, I, I don't know why are things like, why does it feel like kind of a low key setting outside of that? Um, like you can t I think the frustrating thing is you can tell that thought went into this, but you're not really like, it never <laughs> really fully gets somewhere. Uh, you like it's not clear exactly what the reason for everything is. You can just sort of tell. Uh, <laughs> it's it's frustrating to me. I think this room I like a lot because it goes full into hell and you know 
It makes sense as like an exit area. I actually think this is probably my favorite area of the map. Just because of like the detailing and whatever. It's like going full into the gory like doom aesthetic that just feels it feels appropriate. And the the, the ceiling as well. Yeah, I guess this map for something that is like See, I wouldn't really call this map low key, but it's not like it's not like a hyper fast paced map either. It's just something that we're I guess you're supposed to feel like you're gradually descending into this labyrinth and um it's dangerous and you have to kind of step carefully. Um but the way that it's designed, like I I don't know, like it, it feels it feels kinda oddly empty and like I just I just don't know what to think about it, I think. Um but yeah, this having it end more you know climactically with this room feels appropriate and it makes it feel like it fits in at the end of at the end of the towards the end of this game and coming into the next map the spirit world so like it, it, this isn't a map like uh blood falls or something like that that feels mostly forgettable like there's individual encounters and moments in this that are definitely memorable but like Overall, I just have a hard time, like, knowing what to make of this map. I don't know. I'm actually curious how high it was voted on uh, the April agitation results. I can... I might uh, skip ahead to see. I think it was ranked as... Let's see. It was ranked as an 11 seed. Interesting. Um, uh, although it lost to Limbo, which is one of my favorite maps, so that's strange, but uh, apparently people like this map, but it's also kind of a dark horse map. It's hard to like, I, yeah, I wouldn't consider this an unpopular map. I think J my friend JP, JP LeBreton, I think he likes this map. Um, there's definitely things going for the map, but at the same time... I don't know. I think it does encapsulate the general feelings of frustration that I feel about Doom 2. Like, you were trying to do something, but you didn't really get there. But, like, it is also kind of an interesting, like... Doom 2 is something where you can play level self-contained, and, like, you can see that this is a different idea or different kind of space. Um, it feels like goofier or something, <laughs> um, but like if you're playing it as an overall thing and you're looking for some kind of like coherent or non-puzzling experience, um, and I don't mean puzzle in the sense of like puzzles per se, although I am didn't figure out how to get the secret that I'm looking for right now. Um, but just in a like you can't really it's hard to like things don't really feel quite coherent and um it's hard to know exactly what they were going for and it does feel just kind of like a collection of ideas that were thrown together and you know that's i've said this many times but that's sort of the format that a lot of community projects have followed ever since then um and i mean you kind of expect that with the with the modding community but um doom, <laughs> doom 2 kind of does set you up for that as well so i don't know i i guess doom 2 is you know more popular for a lot of people a lot of people who watch these videos has said that they played doom 2 before they played doom 1 because it had a big box release um whereas er, the original doom 1 was only a mail order thing um i played doom 1 first but only because of i bought um the the one with episode 4 um uh, yeah, I I forget what it's called. Uh, <laughs> my my mind is blanking. Anyway, um, that edition, which was a big box version, so I think people have a lot of memories for this, and I can understand like if you're if you don't have context for Doom One, these spaces feeling kind of like strange and like this just kind of being like a. A game where it's like a lot of ideas and perspectives are explored, but it never just fully gets into one thing. Um, 
and I can sort of I can see the appeal of that as as like cultural ephemera or just as like this strange 90s thing where it's like you know more extreme than the previous version but like no one knew exactly what they were doing so they just like threw a bunch of stuff at the wall I mean I'm always like fascinated by that like Duke Nukem 3D is definitely one of those games um, to some extent although it's more it's still more coherent than this is um, but um, I think it's I think it's fascinating I, I do think it's like hard to con it's hard to conceptualize a game like this in a modern sense um, yep that's monster condo but yeah, I think it's a hard to conceptualize a game like this in a modern sense because there are elements of it that are, were very polished and commercial seeming for the time. Sorry that you're accidentally seeing my desktop for a second. Um, but like an indie, like indie games tend to be more aesthetically like uh, you know together, like and more towards one sort of idea or whatever, like. It's very much like, you know, this is nostalgia for this particular thing, or I'm going for this very particular design setup and sensibilities, um, and it's a focus on that, and usually like a shorter experience. So this kind of has like the AAA bloat to it, in that like we're making a bunch of things because we think they're awesome, but we're not quite sure how it, any of it fits together. It's just like based on players thinking it's awesome. But, you know, it's in a level format where there's still, like, obvious individual authorship and, like, the entire product isn't, you know, this is not a focus grouped <laughs> game in any way. Like, I, I mean, that's always the appeal of Doom. To, that's always one of the biggest appeals of Doom to me. Um, but I think as a result, you get a lot of strange things that, like, uh, sometimes are really cool, but sometimes just are kind of see, feel bizarre and like just of a different mindset and of a different world. And it it just feels impossible to conceptualize of something like this being made in this way anymore. And I think that's the weird thing about it. I've noticed that also with like I was playing. Um, this game called Chips Challenge um, that a lot of people used to play for Windows 3.1. It was on like a lot of uh, those CDs where you you know uh, like Windows games, um, and I think I had one with it on it. Although I never played that particular game, but um, I bought it on Steam like more recently, like a re-release version. And the puzzles are so it's so weird. It's such a combination of really interesting and novel ideas and like kind of frustrating and inelegant mechanics that make you do a lot of bullshit uh, that, you know, Doom for the most part avoids because you can at least save everywhere. Um, if you don't, like, fuck up and save over your save, but that's a common <laughs> problem. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, the stage design is just so weird. Like, it's so... And there doesn't seem to be any coherency between, like, where which place you go or you know what you interact with and yet there's this like overall amalgamation of ideas and excitedness about exploring ideas um and the sense that you know it's just all like you know you could do anything with it um that i do think like doom 2 represents pretty well even in, in its like you know many lesser moments um but it just doesn't exist anymore. I don't really see that anymore. When I see people get excited about something, it's always like, we're gonna make, it's, it's always about a very specific idea um, or a specific genre or like uh, homages. There's like a kind of a self-awareness. I think the self-awareness is the big thing that distinguishes indie games um, or, you know, like 90% of them anyway. Um, and it's just impossible to conceptualize of that reality where this stuff was so new and you weren't selling it 
based on like these sort of values that valued elegance it was just like we're just making an experience and this is a brand new space and like let's see what we can do with it um and i'm not saying that's always the best way to even do things because um you know like there's a lot of ways in which it creates ex experiences that are frustratingly incoherent like this um, as I get shot at by a spider mask of mine. Uh, but it's just different and it's unusual and it's something that I'm like not used to seeing and I feel sad how quickly the sensibilities and the eras have changed and how quickly things that seemed previously possible end up feeling impossible. There's a lot of, uh, there's multiple invulnerability spheres here, by the way, um, that I just like gorf all of because I didn't, I'm just like, oh, it's a thing, I'll pick it up because I can't see anything because I'm invulnerable. Um, but yeah, this is an interesting map. It's, it's more distinctive, especially that area that I was just in. That area that I was just in, um, with, uh, you know, where I descended down into here, there's a very strange, like, kind of cryptic progression of you have to like walk into the blood fall and there's an even more horrible cryptic progression thing later that I remember existed but I didn't remember exactly what it was so I'll be running around the map for a while at the end I like this area with the chair I don't know there's something about the chair like sitting in the chair and having it activate a lift and the chair is made of lava and then you have to press against these things and like one of them is like just gives you the key and one of them spawns in a bunch of monsters I don't know there's something about this room that I love this is probably my favorite room in the entire like hell episode outside of like maybe the chasm because there's something that feels very hellish about it and I almost wish I almost wish it gives you a sense of like, what would it be like if Doom Two if Doom Two did the Hell episode like it built it like city settings, but it textured it in this way like a Hell thing. Um, I th I think that could be really cool, and I'm sure like other people have done that to some extent, but it is one of those things that like there's all these <laughs> avenues that they could have explored that you you see little peaks of, but never really fully explore it so it just kind of it's kind of frustrating if you're looking for an experience that's more coherent um, oh yeah there's gosh there's so much stuff in this map I see this map like come up a lot be mentioned a lot I think because of some of the cryptic progression the fact that it's kind of like a slaughter map um, it's a memorable map in a lot of ways, but it's also kind of has that problem of being a little big and empty and not as like tightly whatever structured as episode three, but it feels the most episode three. But then there's this like shit, like people like just guards shooting at you behind walls, which thankfully like I have, uh, you know, an invulnerability, so it doesn't really matter. Um, there's an invisible wall that I go through here. This is the bullshit area that I won't even talk about. <laughs> and I think you need a, you need the red key to for it to even activate, which how would you even know that? Because <laughs> um, you have to go back there. Like, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure you can't just activate it from there. I don't know. I might be wrong about that. And this leads back into that big room that I was just in, which is like a room a very interesting room shape, probably the most interesting of any sort of room shape of any Sandy Peterson map. It's also textures that haven't really been used that much. This like, it's like a Zimmer texture. I like these textures. It's kind of like organic rock slash vine. It's like sort of greenish, slimy-ish. I don't know how to describe it even. Uh, and I like the shape of it. I like how organic it is. This is a good room. Actually, this room feels probably the most like John Romero's uh, sigil uh, set that just came out, which I'll probably try and stream or play through at some point. I don't know, I need like a microphone stand so I'm not holding a microphone up to me because I just moved and I have an entirely new, you know, I live across the country and I have an entirely different, um, well not an entirely different, but th things are set up slightly differently now, so. Um, I don't have much to say about these encounters. They're not like particularly inspiring to me, but they're fine. Like at least there's two different monster types. That's kind of interesting because they'll infight. 
Um, that encounter is actually not too bad. Uh, the intro, the the fact that you don't begin near like a, um, well, I guess that's true. A lot of maps, I'm realizing, you just begin in the center of that. I keep looking for like a door that you come out of. There's two really <laughs> like awful traps here that I managed to avoid the worst of, just because I'm like. I have resources, and I already sort of know what's coming. I don't play this map super a lot either, but I'm a little bit more familiar with this map than Monster Condo. Um, yeah, I'd say this is generally uh, a well-remembered map in spite of all the bullshit, and there are a lot of unique things to this map. Um, let's look at what Linguista says. The spirit world is Doom 2's closest brush with the concept of a slaughter map. That might be not a terribly close brush. Heck, two spider demons and a gagnol of arachnatrons in one room is considered a warm-up nowadays. Nevertheless, map 28's outdoor area uh, with all the invulnerability spears and the plasma cachet, that, that's where I was, um, is just begging the player to go crazy with the BFG, which is fun, especially since the base uh, game doesn't enable you to do it very often. Otherwise, this level is vintage Sandy Peterson with some wonderfully malicious trap rooms, naturalistic rocky architecture, and some, shall we say, ambitious texture usage. I think the texture usage um, is mostly great because it's the goofy hell episode. Um, once again, especially in that throne room, that room is wonderful. Once again, however, Peterson has an excuse of a late game romp inside hell itself, and a bunch of creepy flesh textures are at least an upgrade from Doom 1's infamous fire blue buildings. Yeah, this is like, this map feels very justified. Um, it just like, it's kind of frustrating that we didn't see more organic settings like this and that he just kind of, uh, you know, brought it out here. And this room is also kind of weirdly empty, but I guess it works because of seeing two spider masterminds just like casually running around is pretty scary um and there's also this thing of like you can exit out this way if you have that key but if you don't you have to go through the other exit and face like you know a bunch of encounters um there's a lot of that at the beginning of this map actually if you go um not not to this big room but if you go to like uh not that dark room that I went to, but another room that I think I'm about to go to. If you go there, like, it's horrible from a pistol start. It's, like, the worst. This is a map where where, where you, like, enter into things is really important. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go there. Yeah, this room is, like, totally bullshit if you start come with a pistol start. <laughs> um, this is terrible. And there is, like, health, but you have to, like... You know, it's via other things. It doesn't matter to me now, like, I'm doing okay with it, but, like, imagine that being the place that you go, because, you know, you go the the other ways, and they all seem treacherous, and this seems like the most safe path, but it <laughs> will pretty much instantly kill you if you're, like, low on, low on ammo or health, or you're doing, you know, pistol start things, so. Notoriously mean uh, area from pistol start. A weird room too, because it's weirdly empty. Like the 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 area of like the contrast between empty and like well decorated is very strange in this and a lot of sandy maps. Like the the area of um the area of you know where I was in that's all like organic looking. That the details and stuff are really cool in that room, but then this room is just square, I guess. It's it's just a weird just a weird map a weird kind of setup um let's see what it was ranked on uh the april agitation i'm actually curious about this as well because this is one that i see mixed opinions about um some people really like seem to like the spirit world and some people don't Okay, yeah. It was also considered kind of a dark horse, and it lost to Phobos Anovel Anomaly, which is, I guess, partly by Sandy Peterson. That's the last map of the first episode of Doom, so I guess I would vote that above this one, too. But this is an interesting map. It's like, I can't say that it's bad, 
Just like the last map, it's like they're try. It's he's certainly trying to do something. I'd say even more with this map than the previous map. It just never like fully gets there. <laughs> I think like some of episode two's levels in uh, Wolf or God damn it, in in Doom One. I was gonna <laughs> say Wolfenstein. Uh, in Doom One, are weirder like in places than than any of this in spite of this like obviously self-consciously going for a sort of weirdness um just because the way that they juxtapose things is a little more unusual um but then again i imagine playing this map and it it does like it does feel like hell um especially with like the throne room the invisible walls the skin like it has all the signs of something it just feels like it's kind of thrown together or like something is missing and like the progression here is cryptic i if i had accidentally shot that wall then i would have opened it and i would have probably saved myself five more minutes of wandering around um yeah i guess this was also my anxiety about talking about doom 2 because i don't really know what to say after a certain point and i feel like i'm just repeating myself um I, I mean, I'd suggest if you really want to look at these maps, just check them out yourself. Um, here I'm looking up <laughs> where the red key room is. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, um, I'm trying to think of what I can say that in this time where I'm doing that and, like, you know, next next episode will be the last one. We'll be playing through the living end um, and the final level. Um, and then I might consider streaming Sigil or something like that. Um, there's just a lot of potential possibility, and I think Doom 2 as a game is interesting as a piece of ephemera. It's interesting as something to explore. It's interesting if you're interested in the Doom modding community and you want to see what everyone is referencing. Um, but I don't know if I'd call it like a good game <laughs> in some ways. I mean, by the standards of like it's functional um and like by the standards of shooters in the 90s in particular like yeah it's a it's a good game but if you compare it to like i'm like even if you compare this to duke nukem 3d i think duke nukem 3d is a better game but even like compared to like especially if you compare it to something that you know things that were not as successful at the time like even, even like system shock one which is like very clunky but kind of more objectively recommendable. Um, I mean, different setup, of course. I played through Thief recently, and like I was kind of blown away by a lot of aspects of that game and find it more appealing to me than a lot of what's in original Doom, but it's hard to avoid Doom. Like, There's something about Doom that, on paper, everything seems like even... Even in the moments where it's, like, the most infuriatingly dumb and, like, metal and, like, no one is... It feels like no one on the design team is talking to each other. There's still something about it that just feels u so unique and important um, that it, it gets away with it. Um, and it, that's really what makes me constantly come back to doom it's like this mishmash it doesn't make sense logically and it doesn't have to um it's hard to like even think about something like that now like there is something very unique if if anything else just about the atmosphere about like being in a room like this with all these like you know intestine walls and, and everything like that. I mean, that's like, that's what it's about, in my opinion. I love this stuff. You don't see it enough. Uh, and this ending, and the ending of the previous map really captures that gory side of Doom really well. There is a deceptively intelligent part that hopefully comes out in this commentary, but the dumbness and directness I think is like so unignorable um, that I, I don't really know what you can say it's like about it's it really is about the experience it's, it's it's about the experience of like being in a space where that is happening you can talk about the mechanics of the combat being good and fast and all that and I get it but like there is something that you can't really 
describe or capture even at the moments when it like doesn't work and that's the limits of me doing like videos like this so you know i hope you appreciate it anyway and definitely check out doom 2 if you never have if you have um i might be doing a video about sigil or streaming or something we'll see anyway have a nice day